Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Royan Study Corner. So today we have another video. This video will be the first video that really covers the physics content. <clears throat> so today we're going to be learning about fundamental quantities and SI units. The, this really is a subtopic of physical measurements and units. However, if you look at your syllabus, you won't see this as a section in the syllabus. But it's a necessary foundation that you need in order to go on and do any of the physics calculations that we have to do over the course of the next two years. So, fundamental quantities and SI units. And I am your teacher, of course, Roy and Lloyd. So, let's get into it what are our learning objectives so these are the things that are the end of this video you should hopefully know how to do once you have a good understanding of it as with everything else if you do not have a good understanding of it then i would advise that you go over the video you review the material from your textbook from your course notes well your subject notes um Maybe look at another video like this, Khan Academy and stuff like that, which we all know and love. I love Khan Academy as well. So our first learning objective is recall some of the fundamental quantities of the international system of units. <clears throat> recall that a physical quantity is usually expressed as the product of a number and a unit, recall the base units for some fundamental quantities in the SI system and their related symbols, and finally, explain the need for and the importance of standard units in measurement. So let's start with the final one first. Why do we need units? Now. We know what units are at this point, hopefully, so our units, if we are adding apples and we add five apples plus two apples, then our answer will be seven apples, where seven is the size or the magnitude and apples is our unit. In the same way, if we are measuring length and we say something is seven meters long, seven is the size or the magnitude and meters is the unit. So why do we need this unit? Why not just express something as a number? So, firstly, since each quantity has its own unit, its unit indicates what quantity we're measuring. So if you just come and tell me, hey, it's five. I don't really know what you're talking about. I, I don't know if you're talking about the amount of mangoes it have on a tree. I don't know if you're talking about somebody's height. I don't know if you're talking about how fast a vehicle was driving. I have no idea. So I need some sort of context. If now I see five meters, then I understand what quantity you're measuring. And I know that you're measuring length or height, which is still essentially length. So it indicates what quantity we're measuring. Units allow us to compare quantities that are not in the same space or time. So, let's say we want to compare my height to LeBron's height. LeBron is not in Trinidad, and I am not anywhere near to LeBron. So I can't stand next to LeBron to figure out who's taller. But because we have these units, we can measure my height, we can measure LeBron's height, and then we could compare them to see who's taller. Units are used to give meaning to the expressed values of physical quantities. Now, this ties back in to our first point because the unit really gives us some meaning in the sense that, again, if you have five meters, I understand that you're measuring length. So I understand what you're talking about, and I'm not here wondering if you're talking about the temperature or something like that. Units are used as a means of standardization. We can not only say which is bigger, but also by how much. So let's use LeBron and I again. We don't just have to be limited to say 
LeBron is taller than Royan. We can also say LeBron is one foot six inches taller than Royan. I don't know what LeBron's height is. I'm sorry. I'm just calling a random number because I'm assuming. So we can say how much taller LeBron is than Royan. By multiplying or dividing, we can compare very large or very small quantities. So we don't just have to compare 5 meters to 2 meters. We can compare centimeters. We can compare kilometers. We can compare kilograms. Because we can use these different units to compare things that are really large or really small. And finally, students and scientists can communicate easily with the international scientific community. This ties back into standardization where because there's this, because we understand that this is the same throughout, I can write something and then give it to someone in Timbuktu and they can make sense of it because we all use the same standard units. So those are why we need units. Next we're going on to what is a physical quantity? A physical quantity is a quantity that can be measured and expressed in numbers and units. And the way we have some examples here for how it can be expressed, 5 meters, 5 pounds, 5 minutes, 5 is the number or the magnitude or the size, and meter, pounds and minutes are the different units. So you can measure something like length, temperature, speed, and you put the number, and then you put the unit. Now, how is this different from a fundamental quantity? So we're going to look now at what is a fundamental quantity. So a fundamental quantity is an independent physical quantity that is not possible to express in any other physical quantity, or a quantity from which others can be derived. So, think about an art where you had your three primary colors, which red, blue, and green, red, blue, yellow. If it isn't obvious, I am not good at art, that is not my strong point, so I really cannot remember. But, those three primary colors, and you all can correct me and let me know which they are, um, what they are, sorry. These primary colors are your basic colors that you can use to make all of the other colors. That is the same way fundamental quantities work. So you have your basic quantities that just are as they are. You can't express them with anything else. They can't be broken down into anything simpler. They are as they are. And then you can use this now to express other quantities or derive other quantities. We, you'll see more of this as we go along, so just keep that in the back of your head. But it's not like you will have to answer a question, what is a fundamental quantity? It's really just for you to understand so that you can use this foundation to build on to answer questions that they'll be asking you. So, what are the fundamental quantities? There are seven fundamental quantities in physics. So you see a table here where we have name of fundamental quantity and the symbol of the fundamental quantity. We're seeing seven here. We have mass, and if you want to express mass, you have m as the shortened version of it. Length, we use l just like when we say the area of a rectangle, length by breadth, we have l, same thing. Time, which we use a lowercase or a common t temperature a capital T because we don't want to have a lot of confusion where you have two lowercase t's and you're like what am I calculating or what does this mean does this mean time or temperature I don't know current which is kind of weirdly expressed with an I amount of substance which we use n and is measured in moles and you'll see more of that in chemistry if You've started moles in chemistry already. You're probably like, what is that doing here? But don't worry about that for now. And luminous intensity, which is I subscript V, which is something you'll see more often in CAPE, assuming you go on to do that.
but for the purpose of the c sec syllabus we're only focusing on five the five that we are focusing on is mass length time current and temperature now we're seeing here the same symbols that we talked about on the last slide and the SI base unit. Now you're probably wondering what does SI mean? SI refers to System International and this is essentially many many years ago in France they decided that hey we can't just be measuring things all over the place and I'm measuring stuff in pounds, you're measuring in stones, someone else is measuring by the length of their feet. There's no sort of standardization because then the length of your foot will not be the length of my foot. So they decided upon these units and whatnot that will be a sort of standard units that you go to. So the SI refers to the units that they decided on at that time and that's what we customarily use around the world. There are places that use their different values, but this is the type of units that we use. So the SI unit, and then that unit has a symbol. The SI unit for mass is kilogram. And we see the symbol, which we have gotten used to since primary school, kg. Length, the SI unit is meters, which again from primary school, we use the lowercase m. Time is measured in seconds. Current is measured in amperes. Now I know this may seem weird, or you may you may not be used to hearing the entire word. But if you think amps, which we should be familiar with, amps is short for amperes. So if you look like on your charging block, you'll see um, 1A or 5A, that's referring to the current. And capital K for temperature which is measured in Kelvin. Now I know this is strange because we're used to degrees Celsius and we will continue to use degrees Celsius for day-to-day -day stuff and sometimes in calculations as well. But the SI unit for temperature, so sometimes we may have to convert and we learn how to convert in another video, don't worry about that. The SI unit is Kelvin. Now if you look in the last column you'll see the measuring instrument. So we're seeing here for ma mass, for mass, we have a balance, length is a meter rule, time, stopwatch, current, a meter, which I know we're probably not too familiar with that, and temperature, which we know is measured using a thermometer. So and now I'm just going to show you all pictures of each of these because I know we're familiar with most of them but especially for the balance and the ammeter for us to really get a visual of what this is. So this here is what we refer to as a balance. So every time I say balance I feel like I pronounce it weird and some of my students have laughed at me in the past. Now I don't mean this in a bad way but they just you know um, tell me that I say it weirdly, so bear with me. This, if we look at it and you think about what you would usually call this, we're used to calling this a scale. However, in science, scale means something entirely different, and we call this a balance. So, the same way you would stand on something like this to see that you're weighing 5 pounds or 50 kilograms or you go to the market and they put their stuff on something that may not look like this but it measures the same thing this is a balance we have our meter rule that we are used to some of us may have gotten licks with our meter rule already so we are even more familiar with it our stopwatch which we use to measure time you see it a lot in races and athletes and stuff um, and for your labs, this is what you'll really be using to um, keep track of the time. Now, this is our ammeter. May look a little bit strange, 
maybe, maybe not. Um, we see there's a negative terminal here and a positive terminal. That's where we connect our wires and stuff when we're setting up a circuit. Now don't worry about that because when we get to electricity, we're going to be covering all of these things in depth. Now it's just for you to have a general understanding of what it looks like. And we have our thermometer that is used to measure temperature, which we're all very familiar with. So that brings us to the end of this first video, which is fundamental quantities and SI units. Keep in mind, the, this is just general information for you to understand things going forward. So once you have a good understanding of it, that's it. You have no calculations there or anything. It's just really to know what these things are used for and what's their part, what part they play in all of this physics and science stuff. So thank you for coming to my video. I was about to say thanks for coming to my TED talk. But thanks for watching the video. Um, be safe. Remember to be kind to yourself. And the next video will be on this same topic, so look out for that, and I hope this was helpful. Bye!